Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the new moon in Pisces at 20 degrees, 17 minutes on March 10th, 2024. Welcome. This new moon is a deep one, and I'm going to tell you a lot more about what is deep about this new moon in three energetic themes that I've pulled out from the new moon chart here for this galactic astrology reading. What I do in these readings, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And this is a way to connect us more with our multidimensional self. So many of us are getting curious about what our galactic heritage is. The human galactic heritage will be discussed in this video because this new moon is really addressing and digging deep in galactic human heritage. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my Galactic Alignments Reference Guide. There is a link below in the description box to download it. And when I say that this new moon in Pisces is deep, it's not only because uh, this new moon is in Pisces, a, a sign that is dealing with our subconscious and the hidden and the unseen. But, but it's also because Neptune, the ruler of this new moon, is in Pisces at the late degrees of Pisces. So we, And we also have Saturn in the sign of Pisces. So this new moon is a powerhouse for truly getting into the truth of who we are, but also an opportunity to heal our shadows and uh, also unearth some of the galactic heritage of humanity. Because after this new moon in Pisces, we're going into the eclipse season that is going to be quite intense. So as usual, I go into three energetic themes that I've pulled out from this new moon chart. And I'd like to give you the names of these three themes before we get into looking at the new moon charts. The first theme I've called Healing Our Shadows. And this theme is focusing on the Lyra Ring Nebula and also Lilith in Virgo as a key point of focus. The second theme I've called Human Galactic Heritage in Focus. And in that theme, we're going to talk about Lepus Nihal, the fixed star that is in square with the new moon here in Pisces, but also Orion Regal, which is squaring Lilith. So the third theme I've called Unraveling Ancient Secrets. And that theme, uh, we're going to talk about the Pegasus constellation and the Cyril Aries degree point. This new moon is a deep one because this new moon is speaking to us about um, that humanity is suffering from self-compassion many times. And the dynamic between self-suppression and the rebellion within us. So that dynamic of tug and war is um, clearly helping us to unearth some of our healing that we need to do as a collective at this time. And in Pisces, it's a deep subconscious and sometimes unseen process. So we are encouraged here to address collective trauma that we are now um, due to release. So here we are at the doorway of the spiritual world at 20 degrees of Pisces. It's the third deacon of Pisces, which is the last deacon of the Zodiac. And we have had a number of new moons recently being at 20 degrees uh, in respective sign. And this new moon in Pisces is the last one in the series since November 2023. And what we can see in this new moon chart is also that we do have uh, quite a few squares. So 
this new moon will feel like a little resistance, either within yourself or in our environment. So those squares are here to help us grow. So stay with me here to uh, go through the three energetic themes to learn more about these squares that I see and also other formations. We have a yod uh, again, and we also have a grand cross again. All right, let's take a look at this new moon's chart. So here we have the new moon chart. And as you can see there, the sun and the moon are together at 20 degrees, 17 minutes in Pisces, along with Saturn in Pisces, and also the ruler of this new moon, which is Neptune at 27 degrees of Pisces. The new moon is squaring the fixed star Nihal in the Lepus constellation at 20 degrees of Gemini. And also we have a sextile to the Lyra Ring Nebula M57 at 20 degrees of Capricorn. I will talk more about uh, Lepus and ne fixed star Nihal in theme two. And we're going to move on to theme one, where I'm going to talk about Lyra Ring Nebula next. But before we move on, I'd like to highlight the ruler of this new moon, which is Neptune at 27 degrees of Pisces. Neptune has two powerful squares at 27 degrees, a square to the galactic center at 27 degrees of Sagittarius, and also a square to Orion Seif, the fixed star Seif at 26 degrees of Gemini. These squares, as you can notice, there's a lot of squares here uh, in, in this new moon, especially from the new moon and its ruler. It cannot get more spiritual than this. Uh, and Orion Saif is that fixed star that is associated with mastery when it comes to transmuting negative energy to positive energy. So I'm not surprised to see Orion Saif engaged in this new moon because uh, it, it helping us to guide this energy within ourselves as well that uh, helps us to focus on this transmutation of inner energy from negative to positive. And also this square to galactic center is a big uh, finger pointing at us here in the Milky Way galaxy and especially Earth to uh, allow ourselves to tap into the expanded black hole, the galactic center, is driving our galaxy here from a universal wisdom perspective. So it's connecting us with the multidimensional views of what we need, what we're here to learn. So these squares are very powerful and uh, are really there to help us engage in spiritual growth at this time. So here we have the first theme, healing our shadows. And this theme is based in a yod that I found here with Lilith uh, at the top in Virgo there at 18 degrees of Virgo. Lilith is this powerful divine feminine that is within us all. Uh, on the feminine side, but she is that rebel that is wants to get out and does not want to be suppressed. So Lilith will have a big role coming up in the eclipses as well. And this new moon is pointing uh, to Lilith for us to notice our uh, inner rebellion that wants to expand. But also Lilith in Virgo here is um, encouraging us to tap into our body's wisdom because our body knows a lot more than what our mind ever can come up with if we just slow down and listen to our body. So Lilith's placement here in Virgo is key. It's important. It's powerful. And so let's take a look at this yod. The first leg of this yod is anchored by Mars in Aquarius at 20 degrees of Aquarius. The second leg is anchored by Chiron at 17 degrees of Aries. And then Lilith at the top there, 18 degrees of Virgo. And Lilith is going to play a key role here in the eclipses coming up. 
Uh, as she move into the area of Libra and supergalactic center shortly. So this new moon is a guidance from Lilith to start to unearth our shadows. So here we have Lilith, and I gathered two images of her here. Lilith in Virgo is asking us to tap into our body's wisdom for that truth that we may have um, shut down for some reason, because now the truth is in our body and healing our shadows. Sometimes we think we are uh, have to figure it out and, and we have to mentally clear, but Lilith and Virgo is leading the way to guide us to listen to our body more so than any time before, because Lilith is speaking to us that we may have suppressed our natural rhythm that we have as a human, but also uh, that we have as a human collective here on earth. That natural rhythm can be tapped back into, but that cannot happen unless we listen to our bodies and listen to the rhythm of the earth. Lilith is here to bring that out in us at this time. Because now in Pisces, this new moon in Pisces is all about the unseen, the reliance and belief in something bigger than just what we see. And Pisces and Lilith together here at this highlight of a new moon is speaking to us to really step into uh, listening to our ancient wisdom within to heal our shadows. Lilith is that energy that within us that is bringing out truth, but also with conviction, not stepping down or apologizing. It's an unapologetic energy that is now called for to connect with at this new moon in Pisces. And with Chiron and Mars firing up this yod, there is a call for action. There's a call for healing. There's a call for uh, allowing what needs to surface to surface. And we have some powerful energies here uh, surrounding this yod to build a strong foundation. And I'll walk you through what I see here. So if we start first with Mars making a beautiful trine to Lipa's Nihal at 20 degrees of Gemini, we're going to talk more about Nihal in the second theme coming up. Also, the square between Mars and Uranus, we're going to talk about in the second theme, but I want you to see that there is powerful activations, both to especially that square between Uranus and Mars at this new moon. Now, when it comes to our galactic heritage as a human race, it's very much linked into the Lyra Ring Nebula M57 at 20 degrees of Capricorn. And then we have Chiron. Chiron is at 17 degrees now of Aries, conjunct the fixed star Tau Ceti in the Cetus constellation. Cetus constellation and the fixed star uh, Tau Ceti is very much an, an energy associated with diligence, diplomacy, uh, wanting to shine light on an issue, and also very supportive in doing so. Chiron is making a beautiful trine to the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. And this trine is bringing in this um, flow of resolving mental uh, difficulties. I feel that it's um, guidance around how can we look at an issue or a shadow more uh, from a higher perspective. Um, and Sagittarius and that great attractor is a big visionary and also has an impact on the mental domain. So if we can bring up a shadow and look at it from a higher perspective, it's a uh, Tau Ceti here uh, energy is going to help us see it from a diplomatic standpoint and also a very supportive way of transmuting that energy. 
Chiron is making a square also to the Lyra ring nebula M57 at 20 degrees of Capricorn. And this is again highlighting human galactic heritage, which is very closely linked to the Lyra constellation and the nebula M57 in particular. Soul memories of suppression, um, potentially also evacuation of souls from an area where you felt like home. Some of us have soul memories from Lyra Ring Nebula, which is clearly uh, triggered by this square uh, from Chiron at this time. And finally, if we look at the new moon's position here in this yacht, in this formation, the new moon is central uh, here, really opposite uh, Lilith sits the new moon, making a sextile to the Lyra Ring Nebula and making a sextile to Uranus. This forms a very um, robust energetic foundation for calling in Lilith's energy of being the rebellion in our life. And with Uranus making a trine to the Lyra Ring Nebula M57 there at 20 degrees of Capricorn, it is an invitation to bring in uh, cosmic energy to this soul memory from Lyra Ring Nebula that so many of us here on Earth, um, being of the human race, we uh, likely at some point, many, many, many of us have soul memories from the Lyra Ring Nebula and what took place there eons ago. So this is an invitation to start moving that energy. Uranus is going to make sure that happens with its uh, infusion of cosmic energy at this new moon. So here we have the Lyra Ring Nebula and look at that beautiful eye of energy uh, in the center there. Uh, this image was taken recently uh, of the Lyra Ring Nebula. And also you can see the M57 highlighted there in terms of the location on the star map in the Lyra constellation. So many of us are um, having experiences as a soul uh, related to the Lyra constellation and the nebula in particular. So here we have this beautiful energy calling to us to be addressed, to transmute our um, wounds, our shadows from this time many eons ago, uh, but also to bring out the courageous part of us to now address the shadows within that we feel that we are struggling with. Either How can you become more aware of your shadows at this time? And what are they? How are they impacting your daily life? Are there areas of your life that you feel restricted and frustrated within? Uh, notice that this new moon is an invitation to really look at those areas where you feel uh, that you're suppressing yourself and your uh, essence. This is the time to unearth what has been unseen or maybe not been aware within yourself about it. We're also invited to listen to our body. Lilith is that energy that is in Virgo asking us to truly slow down and tune into our body and the earth's rhythm, your own natural rhythm to find the answers for what the next steps will hold as we walk into the eclipse season next. So who is that rebellion within yourself? Gain some insight to this energy within yourself of the rebellion and uh, by looking at these images, you may uh, call on that part of yourself and get to know it a little more. So here we have the second theme that I've named Galactic Human Heritage in Focus. And we're going to stay a little bit with Lilith first here and point out the two squares that she's making. First, we have the square to the Great Attractor. The Great Attractor is one of the black holes that are driving about 50 to 100 galaxies. So it's a multi-dimensional multiverse of energy that it, we're asked through this square to tap into if we haven't expanded our perspective uh, further just yet. 
But more importantly, she's making a square. Lilith is making a square to Orion Regal at 17 degrees of Gemini. And Orion Regal is associated with energy of uh, benevolent teaching, expans expansion, but also wanting to be seen. So this is highlighting our need for showing ourselves from an authentic standpoint. So this rebellion within ourselves, we also want to make sure that we can show it to the external world without being shut down. So these squares are really forming a grand cross with this new moon. As you can see, I haven't drawn all the lines here. But in, uh, we can see that there's a, a powerful grand cross in motion here uh, around authenticity, but also that we may need to dig deeper in our unknown area within ourselves to unearth that rebel. I wanted to talk a little bit more about Lipa's constellation and, and the fixed star Nihal. We have mentioned Nihal in previous videos, but since the new moon is squaring this fixed star Nihal at this time, I thought it would be good to just bring in a little bit more information here. So the fixed star Nihal is associated with highly intuitive ascension energy of the blue ray. And Nihal is playing a key role as we uh, go forward here into the eclipse season as well. And the square to Nihal at this time is a welcoming of this energy. The square is helping us to grow by welcoming this energy from the Nihal fixed star. It's, an, uh, it's a focus on empathy, empath empathic energy, but also it's revolutionary. So it's meant to bring us in something new that we have not experienced before. This beautiful, innovative, uh, intuitive, empathic energy coming in from Nihal influencing us at this new moon through this square where we're invited to grow, but also Mars's trying to Nihal is that call to action to open this portal up so that we can unearth and uh, infuse our shadows and see things from a higher perspective. And you may wonder, how is this linked into galactic human heritage? I want to show you on the next slide, we have a collection of uh, activations at the 20 degree points. And I've highlighted those here with a star. So I, I'll walk you through what I see here. So this grand cross is surrounded by 20 degree points in respective signs here. We start with the great attractor activated by this square from Lilith, but also the trine that we have uh, from the new moon. So the great attractor is very much activated and involved at this time. And then we have the 20 degrees of Capricorn, which is associated with the ring nebula in the Lyra constellation. And again, we have strong human galactic heritage with the Lyra ring nebula, as I mentioned before. And then we have Mars at this new moon at 20 degrees of Aquarius. Uh, making a powerful uh, square to Uranus, but also a trine to Lepus Nihal. We also have the new moon at 20 degrees of Pisces uh, as well, and Chiron at almost 18 degrees of Aries. We all and we also have Uranus at almost 20 degrees of Taurus now. And lastly, we have Lepus Nihal at 20 degrees of Gemini. So what does this mean? Uh, all these 20 degree activation points. All of these points at 20 degrees of respective signs are really building that portal to the spiritual world, to the third deacon uh, of respective signs. So here we are now highlighting at the new moon in Pisces, this gateway into healing and unearthing our ancient 
uh, talents and gifts and the opportunities now highlighted also by that archetypal energy of Lilith at almost 19 degrees of Virgo in opposition to the new moon. So this is very, very powerful to consider what have we brought with us from our human galactic heritage. And if we look at this from a human collective standpoint, it may be the collective trauma the karma that we have from uh, Lyra Ring Nebula and elsewhere that we are now asked to re-witness, but from a new perspective. What are the things that we have been denied? What are the things that we have been uh, pushing away? Now we're asked to welcome that back and take responsibility for that and turn that into what we're passionate about what are we rebellious about? So this 20 degree point is really that portal where we can look into the spiritual world for uh, new perspectives, guidance, uh, a different way to go about things. So yeah, Lilith is leading the way here at this new moon uh, with support from all these points at 20 degrees. So I wanted to highlight a little bit more about this 20 degree point in respective signs. Since the last eclipse we had on October 14th, 2023, there have been five new moons and each of those new moons have been at the 20 degree point. And also what I noticed was that Uranus have been in aspect to each of these new moons since. <laughs> so Uranus role here in this uh, 20 degree uh, pattern is also significant. So we will have the next eclipse, uh, which is the new moon solar eclipse on April 8th. Uh, and that's not at 20 degrees, it's at 19 degrees. But what's worth to note is that the new moons after the this new moon here in Pisces, it's not going to be at 20 degrees anymore for the rest of the year, at least. So I just wanted to highlight this pattern of the 20 degree new moons, but also the 20 degree point that's so highlighted at this new moon in particular uh, by this uh, guidance from particularly Uranus, but also the Lyra Ring Nebula, Lepus Nihal, the new moon itself, Uranus and Lilith. Uh, so yeah, this is a clearly a portal for healing at this time of galactic human heritage. So here we have the third theme that I've called Unraveling Ancient Secrets. And this theme is focused on Mercury's placement at zero degree of Aries, because this is a very, very potent point that is going to be highlighted, especially on February 15, 2026, when the Neptune-Saturn conjunction is going to happen. But since Mercury is here now, this is a preview of this new uh, revolutionary energy likely coming in 2026 when Saturn and Neptune together are entering Aries together. So at this new moon, Mercury is making a beautiful sextile to Pleiades at seer degree of Gemini, but also to Pluto just entering uh, Aquarius here, now at one degree of Aquarius. I also want to highlight Mercury's conjunction to the Pegasus constellation at zero degree of Aries and the fixed star sheet, because this point and the Pegasus constellation will be highlighted uh, further as we go into next year, but also 2026, of course. So I want to talk a little bit about, about the Pegasus constellation here. So here we have the Pegasus constellation, which is the winged horse. The Pegasus uh, constellation is linked into the Andromeda constellation. And you recognize maybe uh, Alparats there is part of the Andromeda constellation. 
uh, very, the two are very interlinked with each other. But I've marked out the uh, fixed star sheet here that Mercury is in conjunction with at zero degree of Aries at this time. Pegasus constellation, and specifically this fixed star sheet, is a uh, portal to of ancient wisdom. Basically, it's an activator, a, a portal to activate ancient wisdom and knowledge. So this point here is uh, significant to start to unravel that ancient wisdom within ourselves. And Mercury is here to learn is here to uh, notice what we can unearth and communicate it, whether it's first within ourselves, start to have that conversation with ancestors, uh, the knowledge within and in the body is also something that wants to communicate with us. What's interesting too is that the Pegasus Collective is also considering Earth as a place to work out collective trauma and karma. So the link here of the zero degree of Aries with this Pegasus constellation and the link to ancient wisdom and collective trauma is a uh, guiding us to uh, unearth this wisdom within ourselves and, and putting the dots together and, and all of this is also uh, linked into the creative talent that this requires, the bigger perspective that it requires to transmute collective trauma and using uh, creativity. And if you uh, watched my previous video from the full moon in Virgo, it was all about activating that creativity. Here we are with Mercury at zero degree of Aries conjunct Pegasus sheet talking about activating that ancient wisdom within ourselves using creativity, but it's a much bigger scale. It's at the collective level that this is happening through uh, the energy associated with Pegasus. So I thought it would be interesting to note when Venus and Mars are going to traverse this point of zero degree of Aries next. And for Venus, it's going to be on April 5th, 2024, just a few days before the solar eclipse. And also Mars will traverse here on 1st of May, 2024. So uh, keep an eye out for those days because this Pegasus sheet point will be activated as well at the at those times but for now mercury is here uh, gathering information learning about it and so this may be helpful to note uh, what's taking place in within ourselves but also in our collective on those dates as we uh, follow neptune and saturn's uh, journey here to jointly enter Aries on February 15th, 2026. Lastly, this theme about unraveling ancient secrets here, we also have Mercury making a trine to Alpha Centauri at 29 degrees of Scorpio, and also the opposition, notable opposition to the supergalactic center that Mercury is making, supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra. Supergalactic center will be also very key in the eclipses coming up. So we'll talk more about that then. But this zero degree point uh, is clearly a activation of ancient wisdom within ourselves, but also um, part of what we will experience as we move in to 2026 and beyond. And if you recall from previous videos, just uh, quickly here, Alpha Centauri is part of the Centaurus constellation, and it's associated with um, divination and love. It's a very Venusian um, energy associated with Alpha Centauri, but very uh, technical as well when it comes to even astrology and astronomy and medicine and science. So the trine to Alpha Centauri here, to this zero point in Aries, is a uh, energy that flows naturally into that new beginning we'll be having uh, in 2026 around the February timeframe.
And we also have that sextile to the Pleiades uh, star cluster with advanced guidance available to us at this time. Pleiades is playing a key role in Earth's evolution. And I'm not surprised that this supportive sextile is in place here and Mercury learning from uh, our guides in Pleiades. Uh, so at this time, it's a golden opportunity to start to unravel the ancient wisdom within yourself, but also in our collective. Uh, because as we move into 2025, 2026, this is going to be uh, highlighted significantly more. And now with Mercury here at zero degree, we are learning more about what this could be. And this new moon in Pisces is helping us, supporting us to unearth all of that within ourselves and in the collective. So enjoy that. <laughs> So in summary, here we are healing our shadows at this new moon in Pisces. The Lyra Ring Nebula M57 is a central hub of human, uh, galactic human heritage, uh, soul memories. And so many of us have alignments to the Lyra Ring Nebula, which is activated at this uh, new moon at 20 degrees of Capricorn uh, is the nebula and the new moon is at 20 degrees of Pisces. So, yeah, and Lilith leading the way with that uh, rebellion within ourselves that we can tap into. Her guidance is essential at this time. And the Yod uh, encouraging the focus on this by Mars and Chiron anchoring the legs of that Yod, uh, providing the, the infusion of energy to focus on this now. We also have the ga galactic human heritage in focus, the second theme there with Lepus Nihal squaring the new moon, but also the involvement of Orion Regal wanting us to be seen and Orion Regal squaring Lilith telling us that it's okay to unearth our authentic self and actually share it with others. Many of us have soul memories of suppression and the many squares present in this new moon chart is telling us that it's time to grow beyond that suppression. It's time to invite the growth in. And the squares here are reminding us that there's more, there's more to expand into. And Lilith leading the way there with her rebellious self is giving us guidance to do, do just that. The third theme uh, of unraveling ancient secrets is led by Mercury's touch point here at zero degree of Aries, uh, conjunction with the Pegasus constellation and the fixed star sheet. This is a um, turnkey activation of unraveling ancient wisdom in the collective, but also within ourselves. Now, I should also mention that Pegasus will be activated again in April and in May by Venus and by Mars, respectively, at this point. But more importantly, in February 2026, by Neptune and Saturn uh, conjunct this point. So this is a highlight that this new moon in Pisces is the time to unearth this, begin this process of unearthing ancient wisdom within ourselves and in the collective. So I have a couple of questions for you. Should you want to integrate this new moon in Pisces energy some more? The first question is, who is that rebellion within yourself? Who is that unrestricted you. This may be a great journaling uh, exercise to find out, unearth that unknown shadow of yourself that may have been suppressed, to bring that rebellious out some more, take on that Lilith. The second question is, what is your galactic heritage? What are you carrying with you since eons ago as a soul? Journal about uh, asking those questions. You may be surprised what comes through. And lastly, the third question is, what does your body want to teach you? Same thing here. 
to listen and start listening to our body is key. What does it want to tell you? Again, sit with your journal and ask the body, ask your feet, ask your hands, ask your belly, any body part you can ask for what it wants to tell you and what it needs. Tune into your body as this is part of our guiding system moving forward. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There is a link in below description box. Or are you curious about your own galactic heritage and uh, themes? Book a galactic astrology reading with me. There's also a link in the description bo box below to do so. Should you be wanting to dive deep with your galactic heritage. Thank you for listening and watching New Light Living Podcast. This was the Galactic Astrology reading of the new moon in Pisces on March 10th, 2024 at 20 degrees, 17 minutes. Thank you for being here. I love doing these readings for you. And next, we will be diving into the eclipse season. So I can't wait to do those readings for you. Have a great couple of weeks until we see each other again. Bye.